This week's Ion MPI is from ST. Lady Ada, what is your new product introduction of the week brought to you by DigiKey? Okay, I'm glad you asked. What is it? Um, <laughs> it's the uh, ST LPS 28. This is a uh, new barometric pressure and temperature sensor available from ST. Uh, it comes in this funky package. It, um, it's got this like cool lip on it because it's actually designed so you could uh, you know, put into injection molded case with an O-ring or you can attach a tube to it and have, again, an O-ring maybe to seal it. The thing that's really cool about the sensor is it is a um, dual full scale um, up to 4,000 hectopascals absolute digital output um, and it's water resistant. So this is neat because we've had a couple of water resistant packages that are like, okay, you just can use them outside and they're not likely to get damaged. Um, especially if you're using it to, to measure outdoor uh, humidity. I like, you know, without a Teflon um, coating, these have like a gel coating. Um, they're I squared C, they have 24 bit reading. Um, but really, the thing that's uh, cool about them is that they go to 4000 HPA. Um, they are part of a family, you know, we stock actually quite a few ST uh, barometers, uh, pressure sensors. I think we stock the LPS 22, the 25, uh, and the 33. So you can see some of these. Um, but as you can tell, uh, you know, pretty much all of them, except for the 28, only go up to uh, 1260 HPA, which is, you know, basically sea level. Sea level is about 1,000. One atmosphere is about 1,000 uh, hectopascals. And so that's what you'll usually see for most sensors from SD, from Bosch, from other vendors, um, Sincerion, et cetera. Um, so what's interesting about, uh, oh, sorry, and then here's, here's some of the other sensors. So if you do want to pick some of those up, you know, we, we have some of them in stock as well. Uh, and they're good for um, altitude sensing. So this is what, you know, a lot of pressure sensors are used for. Yes, you can use them to kind of detect uh, weather patterns, but what they're most commonly used for is, you know, as you go up a mountain, as you go upstairs, or as your drone, you know, lifts off the ground, uh, the pressure is going to change and you can use this to detect uh, changes in altitude. Um, but what a lot of them can't do is go below sea level. Um, so one thing that this um, sensor does, which is really nice, is it's got, uh, you know, it's got that MEM sensor in the middle and the ASIC is what does the I squared C uh, conversion. Um, and the metal lid is, you know, mechanical protection, but then it's, it's filled with uh, gel. And so the gel protects it from um, water pressure uh, up to 10 atmospheres, which would be 10,000 hectopascals, um, and keeps it water resistant so you could actually dunk this underwater. Of course, you know, the rest of the circuitry has to be water protected or sealed, but the sensor itself can be exposed to water, um, and uh, it even says, you know, water can be uh, mixed with some chlorine or detergent or solvents or chemicals to some extent. I think if you have like a, you know, I wouldn't dunk it in gasoline, but if it's just water that has some contaminants in it, um, the gel will protect the sensor and allow you to still uh, sense that pressure change. And it's important that it can do up to uh, 4,000 um, hectopascals, also known as about four bar, because um, if you want to use this, say, in a, a diving watch that can go down to 30 meters, or just you know a watch that can survive underwater usage and tell you how far below you're going, um, how far below the surface of the water you are. You know, uh, it's interesting is, you know, most uh, sensors, I think they are like, you know, a couple hundred to again, a thousand uh, hectopascals. And, and that will actually take you up to like, you know, most mountaintops. But if you go only down 10 meters underwater, the pressure doubles at 20 meters, it doubles again, 30 meters. Uh, now it's uh, three times um, sorry, four times um, as much uh, pressure as you would at sea level. So, um, you know, even though it's like, wow, four, four times the pressure reading, that must mean you can go infinitely deep. Nope, 30 meters, but that's still um, very deep. And of course you could use this as um, a sensor to determine if you're making like a UAV that goes underwater or uh, some other underwater uh, robotic cam or a, a something that, um, uh, could be in a high pressure zone, um, the sensor will do the job. And of course, it's uh, waterproof as well. Um, the interface is uh, nice and convenient. 
It's um, standard I squared C. There's an interrupt data ready pin handy. There's an address select pin, so you can have two sensors, or maybe actually four sensors, I think, if you connect the SA0 pin to like power ground, clock, or data. I think you can have a couple different um, I squared C uh, uh, address, seven bit addresses. And then it's also not only I squared C, but the I3C, which we covered a couple shows ago. Um, it's you know the new modern I squared C improvement it has a couple of things going for it, but back compatible with I squared C. So don't worry, you can still use it with your um, eight bit microcontroller. And then you want to integrate this into an Android running watch with I three C, go for it. You're also good to go. Um, another th nice thing I noticed is. Uh, the register map is really simple. There's a built-in calibration, uh, but the calibration is programmed in at the factory. So you just, once you initialize it, you set up, you know, what FIFOs or whatever you want, or how, you know, how many readings to take before doing any kind of averaging. Um, you pretty much just read the pressure out, you know, as, as a uh, scale from zero to, you know, the max value, whether you're in um, high pressure or low pressure mode. And that's it, there's no math, there's no exponentials, there's no like logarithmic stuff you gotta do. Um, it's really easy to get that data out and, and calculate it instantly. Uh, ST has a library if you don't want to uh, write it from scratch, uh, check it out. It's not you know, Arduino, but it could probably be easily ported to whatever platform you're using. Of course, it's gonna work great with um, you know, ST's uh, IDE and tools. Uh, but it is on GitHub, so check it out. I, you know, I really am enjoying that um, Silicon vendors are now releasing published open source code for their drivers, for their sensors. It's, um, it's a big step up from you know, even like a decade ago when you were really on your own. You read the data sheet and good luck. Um, but having it <clears throat> not under NDA being open source and available is awesome, so check that out. There's also an eval board, which I can uh, show on the overhead real fast if you want to get started quickly. Um, yeah. Digi has the eval board in stock, and it's basically just a simple breakout. Yeah, well, and then here it is. There's, um, we like to do these when you can actually buy them. Yes, so yeah. uh, this sensor is actually available. You can purchase it. So it's not part of the chip shortage. It's yeah. part of uh, NPI. We wouldn't do that to you. No, so this is, uh, let me see. So this is a sensor in the middle there. So this is just a simple breakout. Uh, I think this plugs into some of their dev boards. Um, but you've just got the I squared C pins labeled out here and the interrupt ground power. Uh, and just a capacitor, that's all you need. And um, you can see it's a quite small sensor. It's designed for watches and wearables, but of course it can be used for anything uh, that needs uh, high pressure waterproof sensing. Okay, and that's high on MPI. High on MPI.